Hello and welcome back to AIT 1102. Again, my name is Matt Luckett, and for this lesson, we're going to be discussing directional control. Uh, directional control, uh, this presentation, we're going to describe what a check valve is. We're going to describe the different types of check valve characteristics. We're going to describe what a uh, control valve is, or directional control valve is, also known as a DCV. Describe different DCV characteristics. Uh, identify your schematic symbols, and then we're going to look at what causes uh, some potential causes for failures in the check valves and directional control valves. So again, uh, if you remember from lesson one, uh, here's our schematic symbol again. Uh, last week or last lesson, we covered the hydraulic pump area. Uh, this lesson, we're going to cover the directional control. So what I've got here is I've got a directional control valve, got another directional control valve up here. And here I've got a check valve. So we're going to delve into these just a little bit deeper here. So uh, basically what a check valve is, a uh, check valve only allows fluid flow in one direction. So if I've got a uh, circuit or a, a, a place for fluid to flow, it'll allow it to flow in one direction, but it won't allow it to flow back. And just to give you uh, a graphical representation of what a check valve is, uh, looks like on the inside. I've uh, got two different types here illustrated. I've got a ball type and a poppet type. Uh, the ball type, basically I've got a ball here that seals on a seat. So when, the, so when the fluid tries to go this way, it actually pushes the ball into that seat and seals it off and it won't allow fluid to flow in this direction. And the same check valve, if I push fluid this way, it actually pushes the ball off the seat against a spring and allows the fluid to flow. So that's how the check valve works, is it, it seals it off in one direction and allows it to flow in the other direction. Uh, the difference between a ball and a poppet type, uh, poppet you'll see you've got a different shaped uh, uh, type of uh, valve here. Uh, it, it performs the same function. And I've got a spring here and this poppet actually creates a seal uh, at this, through this orifice here. So when I push fluid this way, it actually seals it off. And fluid coming back this way will push it, pop it back off of its uh, seat and allow the fluid to flow. Just a uh, different design, uh, but it performs the same function. Uh, <coughs> another type of check valve, <coughs> excuse me. So you can see that on this one, uh, there's no uh, other options. It just allows the fluid to flow in one direction and seals it off in the other. With a pilot operated check valve, it's got, a, it's got an override line. An override will actually will allow fluid to flow in both directions uh, when an override is activated. So uh, on this type of valve, here's your check, check valve part. So under normal pressure or under normal operation, uh, the fluid comes in here, pushes the pop it off its seat, and allows the fluid to flow you know, against the spring. Um, if I try to push the fluid back the other way, it'll actually push the poppet to the seat and block flow. So let's say there's some instances or some uh, reasons with this circuit that I, sometimes I need the fluid to flow backwards and sometimes I don't. So what I have here <coughs> is uh, pilot pressure on this check valve. So if I've got fluid coming this way and I want to allow it to flow, I can actually put pressure back here on this pilot line, which will uh, actuate this piston here, which will push down on my pop seat and push it open and allow, it just holds it open and allows the fluid to flow. So it's just a different type of uh, check valve that gives you a little more options. So uh, sometimes you need that type of uh, operation, sometimes you don't. But yeah, the pilot line here, and I don't know when 2003 discussed what a pilot line is, but basically what that is, is it's, a, it's not part of the power part of the circuit, it's more of a control part of the circuit. So a pilot line is used to control different uh, actuators within a circuit, but it's not actually doing the work like on uh, the main part of, the, of this uh, valve. <coughs> uh, next type of uh, directional control is a DCV or a directional control valve. It's a mechanical device that controls the path and or direction of fluid flow in a fluid power system. So here's just some different examples of what a, uh, a DCV might look like. 
<coughs> so here's kind of a uh, cutaway view of a directional control valve. You can see that this, this is a pilot operated directional control valve. So here's the main body of the valve, which would be in part of the power circuit of the uh, hydraulic circuit. And then I'll sit on top here is a pilot valve. So this valve is actually controlling uh, this valve. And so what I've got here is the valve body. And you can see there's different ports and different things cut inside this uh, valve body to allow fluid to flow or not flow. And this part right here is called the spool. And if you notice on the end of the spool here, it's kind of hard to see, but I've got springs on each end. So these springs are holding the spool right in the middle. And then when I actuate my pilot valve up here, uh, it'll actually put hydraulic pressure on the end of the spool and cause it to actually physically move and shift to one side. Or if I uh, wanted it to go the other way, I can energize the other side of the spool and actually pressurize the other side and shift it over. I've got a valve here to show you. It's a little different. <clears throat> So what I have here, uh, it's very similar to what I've got on the screen there. This is a pilot operated uh, DCV. So if you can see here, it's kind of heavy. So I've got my springs right here that's keeping the spool centered. And you can see the ports here. So as the way the spool is centered up, it's uh, blocking all the ports. And if I shift the spool to one side, it'll actually uh, allow flow from one port to another. <clears throat> and then up here inside this, uh, my pilot valve, you'll see a similar arrangement. I've got another spool up here inside the body that's allowed and that controls the direction of fluid. So uh, another thing to look at on this valve is, uh, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about the different configurations of fluid flow, but we're, uh, the different types of operators. And the operators on a valve is what actually shifts the spool inside a valve. So this one, I said I've got these springs on both sides, so this is a spring-centered spool. Uh, up here, I've got uh, electrical solenoids. You know, going to, you've got these wires here that actually energize the solenoid that causes these spools to shift. And then on the end of this uh, spool valve, I don't know if you can see it, but I've actually got a little hole here, and that uh, allows me to do a manual override so I can take like a pin or something and stick in there and uh, manually shift the valve. So just, some, just to give you an idea of what's, what's going on inside of a DCV as we go through this. <clears throat> so what I was showing you here with the valve body, like I said, there's different ports cut inside the valve body and the spool is uh, blocking or allowing flow through different ports. <clears throat> so for this valve, I've got a uh, lever, and this is a lever operator valve by uh, this diagram. So when I'm in the middle position here, you can see the fl my fluid's coming in here, and it's blocked. There's nowhere for it to go. Uh, these two ports here are blocked. There's nowhere for fluid to go. And this uh, tank port here is blocked. There's no So in this closed center valve, there's no fluid flowing at all when this valve is in the center's position. Now, when I shift the spool this way, that changes uh, lands where, these, where the spool is riding. So now, when the pressure is coming in here, you can see now I've got a path between my pressure port to my A port here, so it's allowing the fluid to flow. And my B port is actually connecting out to my tank. So when I shift it this way, I'm actually putting pressure on this port through here and allowing the B to go back to the tank. Uh, same thing when I shift it the other way now. Now you can see that my pressure port is allowed a path to the B port and the A port is tied back to the tank. So by shifting this valve in each direction, I can actually have the fluid flow from A to B and shift it back the other way, I can have it flow from B to A. So hence the uh, directional control. Uh, Valves are named, and there's a naming convention used for valves. Uh, they go by the number of ports, or the number of ways, the number of positions, the types of spool operators we'll talk a little bit about, 
and the center port configuration. So we're going to dig into this a little bit. So uh, the first thing we're going to look at is the number of ports inside a valve. So I can look on the bottom of this valve here and I see four holes. So this tells me that's a four port or a four way valve. That tells me that they're showing me that there's four, four places for fluid to flow, four ways. Uh, some valves could be a two way and they would only have two ports or it could be just have three. And uh, we'll get into that more with the schematic symbols as well. Uh, the port designations, when, you, when I was talking about the other valves back here, I was talking about the pressure port and the tank port. So uh, your valve will have a pressure port, and these, this is the side of the uh, valve that's actually on the pressure side coming off the pump of your hydraulic system. Uh, the tank port is plumbed back to your reservoir or your tank. Uh, the A and B ports or your uh, actuator ports. So uh, if I'm moving a hydraulic cylinder, uh, one side may be hooked to A, the other side will be hooked to B to give me the, to allow the fluid to pressurize each side of the uh, cylinder based on the position of the spool. And then finally we've got some, it could have an X and Y port and you'll find those on a pilot operated valve. Uh, the uh, ports that actually move the spool can, will be labeled uh, X and Y. Uh, number of positions. So uh, the valves we were looking at before were three position valves. You know, I had a center position and I could shift it one way and then shift it back the other way. Those are three positions. Um, typically, you're going to find a two position or three position valve. That's not to say there's not other four, five position valves out there. There's some, uh, but typically, what you're going to find usually is a two or three position valve. So that's what we're focus on. So this valve right here, uh, you can see that back here, there's like a spring underneath here, and this is cam operated, so something, some moving uh, device or uh, piece of equipment would actually hit this and push this in to shift this valve. So this valve would just be a two position, and then when it came off of this, the spring would push it back out. Uh, solo and operated two position valve. So I've got an electrical solenoid on here that when I energize this, it creates a magnetic field and actually shifts the spool. And then here I've got a three position valve because I've got an operator on both sides. So this one allows me to shift the valve one way and this one actually shift it back the other way. And then neither one is energized and be in the center position. So <coughs> you kind of identify whether it's a two position or three position by the number of operators. So this one's got one operator this one just has one, and then this one has two, so it can shift in both directions. Uh, spool operators, uh, we can do uh, have electrical solenoids, and like for some of these valves, like I said, you, you either energize them, so it's either on or off, so energize them, the spool will shift, de-energize it, the spool will shift back, or it could be a servo, which would allow use uh, it's not on or off, it's, it's more of an analog signal where you can shift the spool a little bit or a lot or anywhere in between. It gives you infinite adjustment on how far you shift that spool. Uh, it could be a mechanical operator, it could be a lever, a cam, some kind of push button or a pedal, uh, etc. Uh, example on this might be a, a hydrostatic drive on a ride lawnmower. Uh, that would be a mechanical uh, valve or me mechanical uh, pre-position valve to the center position, you, your mower doesn't move. When you push it down, then it allows your mower to move in the forward direction and then let go and it goes back to center and you rock it back the other way, it's shifting the spool the other way. Uh, that would be like a mechanical uh, directional control valve and you're able to uh, control how far you shift the spool by how far you put move the pedal. Uh, pilot, uh, we talked about that on, on our examples here. You can have pilot control where you actually have another valve putting fluid on the end of the spool to shift it uh, through a pilot line. Uh, you can have a detent type uh, uh, operate, operation or operator where uh, a detent type is uh, it's like a gear shift. Uh, when you put it in one position, you will actually lock into that position or detent in. You can let go of it and stay, and then you actually have to put 
uh, operate it again to move it out of that position as a D10. And then spring operators is uh, what we've seen where the spring is just when there's when the other when the operator whether it be solenoid, mechanical, pilot, or D10, uh, spring is often used to return the uh, spool to a neutral position. Uh, center position uh, on a valve. This is typically this is going to be on your three position valves. Uh, you can have a closed center, an open center, a float center, and a tandem center. And I'm getting ready to talk more about that as we uh, go through the schematic symbols here. <coughs> so a schematic symbol for a check valve. Uh, you can see it's a very good representation of what's actually going on inside. So this check valve. It's going to allow flow this way because if I got pressure here, it's actually going to push the ball off the seat and allow fluid to flow this way. And if I have fluid flowing coming back the other way, it's actually going to push the ball into the seat and seal it off and not that flow. And then down here, I have a, a pilot operated check valve. This dashed line coming out of the symbol tells me that it's pilot operated. So this is the same thing. If I try to have fluid flow this way, we'll push the ball off the seat and allow flow. Flow this way, push the ball into the seat, seal it off and not allow flow. Unless I have pilot pressure here, it forces the ball off the seat and allows my fluid to flow in that direction. Um, now we're getting to our directional control valve. This would be a two we would call this valve a 2 2 oper cam operated spring return valve. So, the two, this first two here is talking about the number of ways. So, I've got two ports here shown, drawn on this valve. So, that tells me it's a two, port, two way valve. Cam operated, that's this symbol here, shows me that it's cam operated. Spring return. So, I've got a spring here, so when I operate this valve, it'll shift it over, and then when I'm off of the cam, the spring will actually push it back. And so two-way, the second two there tells me, tells me it's a two-position valve. So this would be a two-way, two-position cam operated spring return. So this is really a, a good graphical representation of what's going on inside the valve. I mean, this is not exactly how they're made, but this is how the flow, uh, the valve will allow flow. So <clears throat> when this valve's in a, a non-actuated position, you'll see that the uh, pressure port is blocked and my actuator port is blocked. So when it's in the normal position, there's no fluid flow through this valve. <coughs> if I actuate this valve, picture the, these blocks moving over, my ports are gonna stay in the same position, but I'm moving this block into the flow path. So when this valve is actuated, I'll actually allow flow from my pressure port to my A port. So two position valve and uh, no flow when it's in this normal position and allows flow when it's actuated. <coughs> now this would be a 3-2 lever operated detent valve. So it has three port, so you see I've got a pressure port, a tank port, and an A port. So I've got three ports. It's a two position, so I've only I've got two possible positions here. And this is a lever operated detent. And this uh, symbol right here tells me it's lever operated, and this symbol tells me it's detent. So with this detent valve, it's going to stay in this position until you move the lever. So if I move this lever in, shift this valve, and then let go, it's going to stay in that position because this detent is going to hold it in that position. I'll have to physically pull the lever back to put it back in its normal position. So with this valve, you can see I've got the pressure ports blocked, so when I'm in a normal position, uh, or the rest position, the pressure ports blocked, and I'm allowing A to drain the tank, to drain back to the tank. So when I actuate this valve, you can see now that I put pressure on the A port, and then my tank port becomes blocked. And you might find this on, you'll find out, we'll talk later about the different types of cylinders, but this might be used on like a single acting cylinder where I want to extend the cylinder, and then when I come back, I want that cylinder to train back on its own. So, three le or three position, a three way, two position lever operated detent valve. So you see with these uh, symbols, 
you get a lot of information from these schematic symptoms. And now we're getting to a three-way or four-way valve, three position. So you can see where I've got a pressure port, a tank port, uh, an A actuator port, a B actuator port, and this valve is uh, pilot operated. So, so I've got the X and Y over here labeling my pilot ports. And what tells me that this is a hydraulically pilot piloted valve is these symbols right here. Notice the triangles are colored in; they're solid. So that tells me this is a hydraulic signal or hydraulic pilot line that uh, actuates this valve. <coughs> Excuse me. So a four four way three position uh, pilot operated spring centered valve. So my springs, you notice know, I got springs on both sides. It keeps this valve centered. So when I shift this valve, so when I put pressure on the X port, shift this valve over. Uh, when I was in the center position, you notice everything's blocked. So there's, there's no fluid movement going on through this valve when it's in the center position. So when I actuate this side, I'm going to tie my P port, my pressure to A, allow B to uh, tank. So that's going to allow my fluid flow from A to B. If I shift it the other way, I'll put pressure on B, allow A back to tank. So now fluid flows from B to A. <clears throat> so, uh, we talked about center positions, so this would be a close center position, meaning when I'm in the center, when this valve's in the center position, no fluid is moving. <clears throat> Everything's blocked, all four ports are blocked in this valve when it's in uh, center position, so that's a closed center. Now, this configuration is an open center, so you notice the two actuated uh, blocks are still the same as what, what I've done before. The only thing that changes is the center port. So it's, this type of open center allows fluid to flow. So if I've got pressure here, and it would allow the fluid to flow back to tank, and my A and B ports, every, everything's open. There's, there's no block fluid uh, anywhere in this, in this type of configuration. So fluid can move back and forth up here, and this fluid is just and straight through right there. You would use this type of valve, uh, let's go back, this type of valve you would use um, if you had multiple actuators or multiple valves on a, in a system, you wouldn't want, uh, you'd want this flow blocked because if you're allowing flow through here, you, it could affect uh, flow in another, type, another part of the circuit. Um, this type of operation, you might find this on a uh, circuit where this was this would be the only valve in the circuit and uh, go back into your pumps. You, we don't want to deadhead a pump. So when it's in the middle position, we don't want to block it. We just want to allow it to dump the tank. So if we wouldn't, the pump could always be moving fluid whether we're moving an actuator or if we were in the center position. Uh, float center, uh, you'd use this in a, <coughs> in a uh, system where you have multiple actuators because we don't want to uh, drop pressure by uh, allowing this to go to tank if I've got, uh, I need the fluid to use somewhere else in the, in the circuit. But what this float center does, it blocks the pressure that A and B are tied together and tied back to the tank. And this would allow an actuator to float when it was in the center position. So let's say you've got a, a two position, or a, a double acting cylinder on the end of this, if this was in the center position, so if I shifted this over, I could make the cylinder move one way. If I shifted it back, I would allow the cylinder to move back the other way. But in the center position, I could actually grab the cylinder and move it, slide it in and out because uh, the two ports are tied together, allowing fluid flow between the uh, two ends of the cylinder. Uh, tandem center. <coughs> this is kind of like the open center, except that uh, my I'm not allowing my actuator to float. So if my pressure is dumped straight to tank if I'm in the center position, but whatever my actuator is, that will be locked. It won't uh, be allowed to move. <coughs> so back to our original uh, schematic. So now we've got a pump here, and it's generating pressure and flow into this system. So I'm coming, if I follow my 
that line over here. So I'm here to a closed center valve. If I shift this valve one way or the other, I'll allow flow to come out here and move this uh, double acting cylinder. So I can, if I shift it this way, I'm going to put pressure on this side, which would fill fluid in this side of the cylinder and, and allow this fluid to go back to the tank. The fluid, would, the cylinder would retract. I shift this valve the other way. I'll be putting pressure on this side, allowing this side to go to the tank, which will pressurize this end of the cylinder, and allow this to drain back the tank, and allow my cylinder to extend. And what I have up here is a cam operated valve. And by the way, this was a sil uh, solenoid operated valve. So electrical signal will cause this valve to shift. Uh, I've got a cam operated valve here, so when this cylinder extends all the way, it'll actuate this valve and allow fluid flow over here to my uh, hydraulic motor. So <clears throat> I've got this check valve here, so when fluid's flowing this way, I allow fluid flow through this check valve and uh, allows my cylinder to retract at a given speed. But if the fluid's flowing the other way, we're where I'm extending the fluids coming out here, I actually close this check valve and force all the fluid through this uh, uh, flow control here, which we'll, we'll talk about later. So we're kind of getting more of an idea of what's going on with the different components uh, inside the uh, hydraulic circuit. So these, these are your DCVs with the uh, check valve. So what can cause a directional control valve to fail? Uh, what type of uh, failures or what causes, uh, like pumps, contamination uh, is probably one of your worst culprits. Uh, you get contamination in a valve, uh, it could cause a spool, you know, you got the spool that shifts inside the valve body, uh, if you get buildup in there, or dirt, uh, those spools can stick, because those are very tight clearances, so if you get any kind of contamination in, in there at all, that spool could actually get wedged in there and stick and no longer uh, shift back and forth. Uh, same thing with a check ball or pop it in a uh, check valve. It could actually uh, get uh, contamination buried up in the seat. So when the ball or the pop it gets up against the seat, if there's contamination there, it won't let it seal off all the way and it'll actually let it leak. And you won't be able to control the fluid, which way it checks and which way it flows. And it can also cause premature wear where, you know, like I said, inside these valves you get some very tight tolerances. And if you've got contamination running through there, you can erode away on the spool of the valve body and have cause premature wear, which will give you uh, internal leaks where you might not, you know, uh, might have actuators drift, you might not be able to control them, uh, make them stop. Uh, uh, you can actually, it can actually uh, affect the flow through that valve. Uh, it can do a lot of different things. Silting. Uh, this happens if you, uh, like if your fluid, you don't change your fluid often enough, you can kind of like get like a varnish or a layer, a coating uh, built up on surfaces in a valve and it costs the same thing. You know, if you get with those tight tolerances, you get kind of a buildup inside that spool on the spool or in the uh, bore, uh, you can cause uh, uh, DCVs and things to uh, drag. Mechanical failure. Um, you know, your springs have got operators, they've got springs, there's washers, there's pins, there's, there's a lot of different pieces inside. And if one of those pieces breaks, like the spring breaks, it may not shift the spool back to a return position. Uh, you can have a, um, a solenoid actually burn up, and if that happens, a lot of times it'll, it'll melt uh, and release just a ball of uh, hard material around your uh, actuator pin and not allow your uh, to move. So just a lot of different things that can happen uh, inside a valve. Uh, let's say contamination is probably your uh, do the most damage. The mechanical failure, like uh, damaged operators, is something you'll probably see more often. So uh, you can also have uh, seals, spool, valve, body wear. So that goes back to your contamination or just uh, years of use. Uh, so if you have any questions about uh, directional control, you can, like I said, post in the discussion board, email me, call me, and I'll be happy to answer your questions. Thank you.